Historical ecologists study the native landscape to help resource managers restore it back to a functioning, vibrant ecosystem. This is Switzer Network News. My name is Chuck Striplin. I'm an associate environmental scientist with the San Francisco Estuary Institute and uh, an advisor to my governing council with the Amamutsun tribe. Chuck Striplin and his colleagues are crafting a series of methods that are helping large landowning entities such as parks and cities manage the land under their care. The goal is to actually build resilience back into our, our ecological systems. To illustrate, Chuck talks about California's valley oak trees. Prior to World War II, there was a 99% diminishment of the valley oaks in the valley floors of Santa Clara Valley, of Napa Valley, of Sonoma Valley, of San Ramon Valley. Those were in some places very dense valley oak stands. And now each individual tree is separated by so much space that they can't even pollinate each other anymore. They become genetically isolated as have the communities of insects, of birds, of reptiles, amphibians potentially that, that are associated with those individual trees. So we've actually come up with a concept of re-oaking where you could actually just through tree replacement rebuild a valley oak ecosystem within a city by just replacing the street trees that are there with valley oaks. And so you would build resilience back into that system. And you can do this at the peripheries of the cities as well. And in the agricultural areas where, because of work-related requirements, shade must be provided for people working in the fields. Believe it or not, it can be cheaper in the long run to plant a tree <laughs> than to you know build some structure and have to maintain it and upgrade it and all that kind of stuff. So there's, there's some new and interesting um, pressures that are... Uh, forcing us to come up with new and interesting solutions in, in many cases based on history and based on the history of the landscape. That information is actually found on the land, in the archaeological sediments, in the trees, in the movement of creeks. It also resides in the people. Tribal people throughout California still have memories of their grandparents and their, their basketry and their material culture, all of which have ecological information embedded into them. You can go back to nearly the time of colonization through literally tens of thousands of Euro-American derived bits of documentation from aerial photos all the way back to the Spanish diseños and the general land office surveys when they set up the township range system. All of that information is, is there. Um, nobody's just really done the work to assemble it and interpret it and vet it, peer review it. So we, we actually go through each one of the historical source types and really dive into those, those maps, those photographs, those paintings, and look at the motivation behind them. Why, you know, they, they always had some sort of either economic or military or you know, some other justification for creating that, that piece of archival information. We're able to then, based on kind of the triangulation of sources, um, figuring out whether we have high, medium, or low certainty about an assertion that we make about the historic landscape. So, you know, take a pond that we see on a map in, you know, 1797 or something, and that feature persists through time because we see it on different maps, different photographs. It's talked about in survey notes. So that accumulation of sources helps us build a picture and a level of confidence about what we're saying about the historic landscape. And here's another reason driving the need for the information provided by historical ecologists. We have this looming threat of climate change, and we're not really sure yet at, at a very localized level what impacts that those are going to have. We know that sea level rise is going to is is going to hit. We know that uh, you know potentially more precipitation will fall as rain than snow. Um, we know that some areas are going to heat up. Some areas are going to experience more extremes. So, from an ecological functionality standpoint, we really need to build back into our system some level of resilience to be able to weather whatever's coming, even if it's just buying time. For more information about this topic, please visit our website. This is Switzer Network News.